never spawn. Last November, Activision smashed sales records and dominated the shooter market with Modern Warfare 3, a Call of Duty title that took us on a thrill ride through a conflict of nuclear proportions. And now wait a few moments, let him rest. This should help you remember everything. The year before that, Treyarch brought us Black Ops, a game that pulled us back in time to the Cold War's backstabbing espionage and guerrilla warfare. Now the two game worlds collide in the next Call of Duty, Black Ops 2. Combining the clandestine operations of Treyarch's game with a futuristic setting evolved even further than the technology of Modern Warfare 3. Got weaker. The game's first trailer just exploded onto the web. Let's dive in and see what Treyarch and Activision have in store for us on November 13th. The video starts with a title card revealing the year 2025, eight years after the conclusion of Modern Warfare 3, from the perspective of Sergeant Frank Woods. A USMC veteran, Woods was previously one of the main characters in 2010's Black Ops, and he's clearly not aging very well. His impressive collection of medals hangs on the wall in the background. In his raspy monologue, he ominously declares that technology has grown by leaps and bounds, while humanity itself has weakened and decayed. None of this surprises me. Here we catch our first glimpse of the new tech we'll get to play with in Black Ops 2. First, a dual rotorcraft not unlike the American military's V-22 Osprey, but more advanced in its design. It appears to have two turbines on the rear vertical stabilizer, suggesting it performs long-range flight with the advantages of a jet while maintaining vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. Its application appears to be passenger transport and no weapons are visible. We also see high-tech heads-up displays and control panels visible in the plane's cockpit. Next, we get a quick look at a fictional quad rotor craft with the word Charlene scrawled on one of the rotors' casing and a ballistic weapon mounted on the front section of its underbelly, hinting at close air support applications. The craft is clearly a remotely controlled drone which will be featured heavily in the game and are controllable by the player throughout the storyline. Here we see a ground mech painted in digital desert camouflage and armed to the teeth with a massive Gatling style minigun, various other hardpoints and possible missile weapons. Treyarch has dubbed this the Cognitive Land Assault Weapon or CLAW. The glass situated on the top of the war machine are cameras for remote operation of the weapon. After a Chinese missile launches next to a pair of quad rotorcraft, the compact stealth plane soars through the red sky, reminiscent of the experimental X-47B unmanned combat drone. The plane features a flying wing design usually used for reduced radar signatures in military craft like the B-2 bomber. A similar but not identical craft, possibly a drone, rockets into a building as others dart around burning skyscrapers in the background. It's clear that from the storyline to the gameplay, Unmanned vehicles and drones are going to be featured prominently in Black Ops 2. After more shots of the quad rotors and a pair of unidentified dual-engine hovercraft, the trailer finally gives us a taste of Black Ops 2's gameplay. As the player controls one of the quad rotor ships from a first-person perspective, the game's HUD instructs the player to tap or hold left bumper to issue commands to the whole team or just a squad. Lining the bottom of the screen are icons potentially resembling different vehicles available to the players. Each of these icons corresponds to buttons on the D-pad. These details let us know that this is the Xbox 360 build, in addition to confirming some sort of team tactics system. Also visible in the interface are Protect and Secure waypoints, which may all be part of the game's new single-player Strike Force game type. The game mode promises the ability to switch among a wide range of soldiers and unmanned vehicles at will in order to complete objectives. Strapped to a soldier's arm is a tactical display detailing the time, date, and his current assignment, revealing that part of the story takes place on October 3, 2025, from the perspective of David Mason, the son of Black Ops' Alex Mason. The three-dimensional display of a city block and X-ray scan of a possible terrorist threat serve to illustrate Woods' speech that computers have advanced far beyond humanity's ability to control them, while the quick successive shots of the robotic mechs, crawlers, and choppers drive home the point. This jet, which also has hovercraft abilities, 
is a fictional craft with a partial delta wing design, similar to many modern production and conceptual aircraft, including concepts for the next generation of unmanned fighters. At this angle, we can see the craft have canted vertical stabilizers and twin jet engines, like the modern F-18 and F-22 fighter jets. Interestingly, they also appear to have a cockpit, suggesting that these models could be manned. Finally, a clearer view of the claw. We now see that it's a four-legged assault weapon with even more firepower than we got to see before. Running alongside the mechanized beast is a special forces soldier packing a futuristic assault rifle, likely a variant of the experimental XM-8. The blue patch on his shoulder is that of the United States Secret Service, a blue shield shape with the American Eagle encircled by stars. We'll get a better close-up of this later. Here we see a close-up of a U.S. Air Force drone, the Predator C. This version of the craft can carry a massive 3,000-pound weapon payload stealthily in its internal weapons bay. Such destruction can be devastating, especially when turned against its owners, as Sergeant Woods' chilling narration warns. What happens when the enemy steals the keys? Showing off the game's new HDR lighting and improved shading systems, the trailer gives us a glimpse of Los Angeles in peril. Treyarch claims the game will not drop below 60 frames per second and will boast DirectX 11 technology on the PC version. Other areas shown include a desert environment with militants and what appear to be angry protesters. What role they will play in the game's story is not yet known. What we do know from the trailer is that the player will be able to pilot one of the futuristic jets. The fighter's heads-up display shows off profile and bird's-eye views of the craft. To the right, the game tells the player that he is in Sea Toll, or Conventional Takeoff and Landing Flight Mode, as opposed to utilizing the jet's hover technology. The craft is flying around 470 knots, about 240 miles per hour, at a dangerously low 500-foot altitude. According to the ammunition and weapons display, the craft is firing a fictional Sky Buster missile and can carry a maximum of 12 of the air-to-air rocket-powered projectiles. Back in the midst of the ground war, the trailer reveals a new usable weapon, a futuristic handgun with a retractable stock. It appears to be a modified variant of the TDI card, and it features a fully automatic firing mode. This will be the first time the weapon appears in a Call of Duty game. The trailer shows off more protagonists taking cover and executing tactical maneuvers. All of them are equipped with the XM-8 variant, suggesting it will be a staple weapon throughout the game's single and multiplayer game modes. In spite of all the new toys to play with, there's always room for the old favorites. We see a soldier kneeling with his M16A4, an assault rifle featured in all three modern warfare games. Another old favorite makes a brief appearance, the M249 light machine gun in the hands of another Secret Service team. For a brief moment, we see the player controlling what looks to be the flying wing drones from earlier in the trailer this time utilizing an external camera viewpoint rather than an internal heads-up display. If you're sick of advanced technology and robots by this point, Treyarch has just the thing for you. Horses. Apparently taking place in the 1980s prologue portion of the game, this section of Black Ops 2 looks to be part of the single-player storyline and may not make an appearance in multiplayer. Also on the left-hand side of the screen is the trusty, dusty AK-47 assault rifle that's appeared in the series for years, though we don't know if it will be playable at this time. As they ride through the dust, a Mil Mi-24 attack helicopter screams overhead. After several lightning-paced sequences showing off the blistering, shooting, flying, and explosive action of Black Ops 2, we get a glimpse of the player at the controls of a gunship, though whether it's the AC-130 from the modern warfare games or a more futuristic model, we can't say. As the trailer wraps up, a soldier charges forward with an unidentified shotgun with an ACOG scope, ready to fire. He has what could be an Army Special Forces patch sewn to his uniform and what look like flashbangs and smoke grenades well stocked around his belt. Finally, it all fades to black and we're left waiting and wondering what else Treyarch has in store for the franchise. From beginning to end, the Black Ops 2 trailer is full of promise for a new setting and direction for the Call of Duty series. To keep up with the latest on the game, stay tuned to Gamerspot.